So let's go ahead and work out the formalism for diprotic and triprotic acids and appreciate that as we work them, I am not going to subject you to anything more awful than the diprotic and the triprotic acid cases. That means I'm either going to start with H2A and lose two protons or with H3A and lose three protons. I won't make you do H4A. Notice here that I'm not calling A carbonate or some kind of amino acid. I'm not calling this phosphoric acid with a phosphate group here or some other triprotic acid. Just as when I was working all my other acid-base problems, I'm going to reduce however complicated that compound is to calling it A. And in so doing, I am showing you all you need to know for the formalism for writing polyprotic acids. H2A is going to lose a proton to make HA minus, and HA minus is going to lose a proton to make A double minus. See how simple that is? I am going to lose the proton here. I'm going to lose a proton there. This first loss is Ka1 because the strongest acid, the most protonated species, gets to be called Ka1, and the second one gets to be called Ka2. Down here with H3A, I can do the same thing. H3A goes to make H2A minus, which goes to make HA minus 2. You may notice I can do this while talking. You need to be able to learn to do this while talking because it'll prove that you've gotten the rhythm of removing protons and adding charge down. So the loss of a proton in each of these cases here, one after another after another, corresponds to the Ka1, the Ka2, and the Ka3. You can be guaranteed that this Ka almost always is going to correspond to a pK, which is the smallest number becoming larger. Smallest number becoming larger. Turns out there's some interesting cases where that isn't true, and I probably shouldn't have said that to you, but just assume that they're going to get larger as I go from left to right, the pK value. Now, having shown you this in this nice line format, the real thing you need to learn to do is to actually set up the equilibria stepwise by themselves, and I'm going to do that and then show you the k values associated with them. So here's H2A going to make H plus and HA minus, and that Ka1 is equal to the stuff on the right over the stuff on the left. There you go. The HA minus then, this guy right here, goes to make H plus and A double minus. The Ka2 is going to be equal to the stuff on the right over the stuff on the left, excuse me, A double minus, divided by HA minus. Notice that the formalism for this, to write the loss of a proton, just as when we do it for a monoprotic case, HA goes to H plus and A minus, is the same here. It's just that I've got a residual proton left over in this case that goes on and reacts again. Notice that the Ka1 and K2, same formalism, stuff on the right over the stuff on the left. And you can see that the number of protons down below is equal to the number of protons up above, that the charge down below, zero, is equal to the charge up above, zero. Here, I've got one proton up top, one proton down below. I've got a charge of minus one down below. Minus two and one is a charge of minus one up above. Let's do the H3A cases. Here's H3A, losing a proton to make H2A minus with a Ka1, which is the proton, times the H2A minus over H3A. That guy right there goes on to do a second step of dissociation. H2A minus goes to make H plus, plus HA minus 2. Ka2 is equal to the stuff on the right over the stuff on the left. See how easy it is to get your twos and your minuses screwed up? Trust me, on exams that you're working, we will make sure that when we ask you to tell us the second stage of dissociation, that we give you a bunch of examples that look almost the same. And here's HA minus 2 going on to form H plus and the fully deprotonated version here. Ka3 is equal to H plus times A minus 3 over HA minus 2. That's it. That's all of the polyprotic acids I expect you to know. 
the diprotic case, the polyprotic, uh, the triprotic case, a Ka1 and a Ka2, a Ka1, 2, and 3. I like to write it this way because it's obviously so much faster, but in your brain you need to be able to sort it all out to convert it into these examples down here. But writing it this way allows me to quickly see which of my K values I need to worry about. So I always encourage you that until you've really got this stuff down, that you'll be able to write this out this way so you know what K values you're working with. Because in the end, that's the part that's going to be most complicated.